Howdy, it's Mr. Russell, and we're here to talk about significant figures. So significant figures, or sig figs, uh, give a rule for precision. And they um, uh, will help us to round. Uh, before, in the past, you've had a teacher tell you to just round to two uh, decimal places. Well, now you will know the rules, so you don't even have to ask that question now. So the rule, um, the first rule, the first rule is going to be that all non-zero numbers are significant. So uh, numbers 1 through 9 are significant, or they are sig figs. The only one in question is going to be the zero. Uh, we need to know, and we need to decide, based on the next three rules, that if the zero is significant or not. So let's go to rule number 2. When a zero is surrounded by a non-zero uh, by non-zero numbers, it is significant. So I call this the sandwich rule. Uh, so one zero one would have three significant figures because the one is significant and this one is significant. So since this is sandwiched in the middle, there are three sig figs. It doesn't matter um, which one uh, it. Uh, how many zeros are in the middle? We could have a hundred zeros in here um, and they would still all be significant. So all of these, there would be six sig figs here. Rule number three is about um, the decimal rule. Uh, a leading zero will never be significant. So um, when we start out with zeros, uh, uh, those are never ever significant and we're reading from the left so when a decimal is in the number the first non-zero number on the left uh, present in all the numbers after it are significant so 0 0.7 is significant and then 0 I'm sorry uh, 0 0.7 will have two sig figs I'm sorry one sig fig because this one is not significant but seven is significant and then um, 0 0.0070 0. these leading zeros here oh sorry uh, 0 0.7 my goodness 0 0.0070 0. there we go um, these leading zeros here are not significant but we get to our first non-zero number and then everything else after it is significant so what if I have a rule like if I have a number like this if I have a decimal present and my first non-zero number is over here that means that everything else after it is significant so one two three four five uh, significant figures if this decimal place was not here anymore this would be significant but these would not be significant here these um, do not uh, have uh, they don't have the sandwich rule and they are just zeros so this one would only have one uh, significant figure but if you put the decimal back in then all of a sudden they all become significant the next one is about scientific notation it's pretty simple scientific notation will have a number like this um, and then it will have a multiplication sign and then a 10 to the something I call it 10 to the stuff it could be a very uh, could be any number any integer uh, so it could be uh, negative uh, or positive um, just any integer up here very big or very small um, but, but we're really uh, when we're looking at the significance we're not really concerned with the multiplication sign or anything else here so we can actually 
just almost ignore this right here um, when we're looking at significance. The only thing that matters is uh, what is to the left of the multiplication sign. So everything to the left of the multiplication sign, whether it's a zero or a non-zero number, is significant. So that means that 1.00 times 10 to the 8th, we're going to ignore um, this whole part right here uh, when we're looking at significance. We just need to know that there are three sig figs here because 1, 0, and 0. It is to the left of the multiplication sign. So you might ask, well, what if I have scientific notation that says this, 0 0.9 times 10 to the 8th? Well, first off, um, we would ignore this, but this one is not in correct scientific notation. In scientific notation, the stuff that's to the left of the multiplication sign must be um, between 1 and 10. It cannot be uh, 10, uh, exactly 10, but it can be exactly 1. It has to be between 1 and 10. This number is not between 1 and 10, so this one uh, would not be uh, correct scientific notation. Let's work through a couple examples real quick. Uh, here we have um, five non-zero numbers, so that means that there are five sig figs. I want, given the following numbers, indicate how many significant figures there are in each. So here we have our first non-zero number, um, a five, but the two after it are not significant. There is no decimal place, so this one only has one sig fig. Here, um, there are there is a decimal present, but a leading zero is never significant. So I'm going to go to the first non-zero number here, and everything else after it is significant. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That's five. And then here. There's a non-zero number. Uh, I'm sorry. There's a decimal. So I go to the first non-zero number. And I count the number of digits after that. And likewise for the same one. It's Here's my first non-zero number. And then I just count all the ones after it. So here a decimal is present. Um, and I have my first non-zero number. So there are three sig figs in this one. Notice that 500 with a decimal and 500 have two di um, different numbers of significant figures, even though they represent the same number. Uh, 304 follows the sandwich rule. So this one has, oh, excuse me, this one has three sig figs. And then 1008 still follows the sandwich rule, so it has four sig figs. And then here, much like before, a decimal is present, so the first non-zero number and everything else after it is significant, so that means there's a five, five sig figs here. This next part is for you. Um, this should be a review on scientific notation. Um, just remember that um, when you uh, have scientific, no when you convert something to scientific notation, the first one needs to uh, anything to the left of, of the multiplication sign needs to be between one and ten, and then it'll always be ten to the something stuff. So if I zoom in here, so I can see. I am going to look at this number here. My, imagine a decimal place here. So I move the decimal over one, two, three, four times. So I'm going to write three times ten, and I moved it over one, two, three, four. 
I moved it over four times, so I will get a positive four. All right. Notice that um, I am keeping the same number of significant figures. You need to keep the same number of sig figs. So there's one sig fig here, and then there's one sig fig here. So I will scroll down one more time and work uh, this next one just to show you that if we have I'm gonna write I'm gonna move this decimal place all the way over to here so it'll be 1.7 I'm sorry 1.7 and then I'm gonna count how many times the decimal place moves so everybody look 1 2 3 4 5 6 7. I move the decimal place seven places to the right so that means that when I write times 10 to the stuff my stuff is going to be a negative 7. I moved it seven places to the right so it's going to be a negative number. When this stuff is uh, negative it is a very small number like this one and when it is positive it is a very big number so once we know what a significant figure is we can start doing our arithmetic this is where um, knowing what it is comes into play so adding subtracting multiplying dividing so for addition and subtraction there's a rule where you respond with the least number of decimal places so um, you do the math just like normal. Do the math first and then you round. 2.3 plus 4.66. Um, I hope you guys can see my calculator um, where I get 2.3 plus 4.66 equals 6.96. But uh, since and I need to only have one decimal place here so I need to take what my calculator gives me 6.96 and I need to round to one decimal place so that means this I, t I will keep this number and then I need to look at the number before this number will tell me if I need to round up or down obviously I need to round up so this will round up to a, a zero and this will round up to a seven so my final answer for that first one would be uh, for this number one right here would be 7.0 65.99 .9 is minus 1.2 will be uh, here so if I type it into my calculator, do my math first, minus 1.2, and I have 64.79. 64.79 is my math before rounding. Now, um, I only have one decimal place here. So I need to look at my decimal place, and then that's going to be where I'm going to round. The 9 means that I need to round up, so I'm going to write down that it's going to be 64.8. Lastly, we're going to look at multiplication and division. Um, you need to respond with the least number of sig figs used in the original problem. That's the rule of thumb. So look at what you started with and then that's how many sig figs you should end with. So uh, 709 has three sig figs and 2.0 has two sig figs. So my answer should have two sig figs. That means that I need to take uh, 709 times 2.0 equals 1418 so one four one one four one eight and I need two sig figs so that means I'm gonna take um, my first two sig figs and then I'm gonna round after that 
So the 1 means I round down. And that means that this will turn my answer to 1, 4, 0, 0. Now 40 over 5, uh, 40 decimal place divided by 5.00. 0. Um, so 40 divided by 5.00 0. 0. Um, will equal what? I have two sig figs on top and three on bottom. So my least number of sig figs is going to be two. Let's do our math first, and let's see that 40 divided by 5 is just simply going to be 8. I need to have two sig figs in my answer, so I'm going to actually add an extra 0. That's the way it works. I just add an extra 0 so that I have two sig figs, and then I'm done. All right, thanks for watching, y'all. Alright, I want y'all to uh, go ahead and um, work these out on your own. Make sure that you um, type, just type the, the arithmetic into the calculator like usual, but just go off of the number of significant figures um, and try to, uh, try to give the correct number answers here and then give the correct uh, give the correct number of significant figures here and then you do the uh, actual math here and I want you to round in the correct place